dosing modification, I think, is really, really important. I think we'd all agree that, you know, three PARPs came on the market fairly quickly. We're all trying to figure out how to use these. And, and it's nice to have choices for our patients. And it's nice for responses as well as nice for side effect management. And, um, you know, there's um, niraparib, um, the, the body weight dosing less than 77 kilograms, as well as a platelet count of less than 150, I think was a very important um, exploratory analysis ANOVA that got, got applied to Prima to, to help get um, a, a tailored dose in that patients who are above 77 kilograms and platelet count above 150,000 could start on 300 and then be dose reduced versus patients who um, had um, one of those would be started on a lower dose at, at, at 200 milligrams. And, I, and again, I think that it's very nice to see that um, because what you can then see um, is hopefully decreased side effects. And that's what we'll see again, uh, Prima. And I think it was about a third of the patients that were, uh, were, were, were started in the uh, Prima that's trial right. that were allowed to have the individualized dosing. So some of the patients still got 300. It's not a, we started the individualized dosing and everybody got 200. No, if you met the criteria for 200, you got 200. If you met the criteria for 300, you, you, you were started at 300 uh, milligrams. And if you didn't start at 300 milligrams, that would have been a protocol violation. Um, so to me, I think it's important to know that um, we're trying to individualize the dose, which makes sense. And then looking at the side effects, again, uh, 300 milligrams, 200 milligrams, 100 milligrams, you can see the nice color coding and you do see that the, there's a difference in thrombocytopenia, um, which was one of the, the, the side effects that I think many of us were concerned about. And I know that it did catch me off guard as I was learning how to use um, niraparib and all the PARPs um, you know, I thought the thrombocytopenia at times was a lot like gem carbo, where you'd started and the platelets trickle down a little bit. You really wouldn't pay a whole lot of attention. You'd follow it, but you could see platelets at times uh, fall fairly quickly. So it was very nice uh, to see some of the individualized dosing. And you can see the, the effects on anemia, neutropenia fatigue, as well as hypertension. So to me, I think the individualized dosing has helped decrease uh, the incidence of some of these uh, side effects. And again, it's important when looking at NOVA. And again, I think with Prima, they did look at the individualized dosing to see that there was no difference in PFS for these folks. So patients who were started and underwent dose reductions. And again, I like how they looked at PFS after month level th uh, month three. So to look at those folks to make sure they were on, a, on, a, on, on their uh, titrated dose to see that there's really no uh, statistically significant difference in, in progression-free survival. So I really thought that this was really important coming out of Prima in that uh, looking at NOVA going from the, the standard 300 dose to then applying it to Prima to see that we could go ahead and apply these, um, these, uh, th this individualized dosing. And are you guys doing this in your practice or how are you guys dosing niraparib uh, based off of Prima, based off NOVA for your patients coming in to, for um, treatment right now? Yeah, we're using the platelets and the, the body weight for sure. Have Us you guys too, absolutely. It? Have you noticed a de decrease in side effects? And, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a population it really works for. There's still a population that needs another dose reduction, but we're definitely seeing less of that, like to your point, that profound drop in um, platelets that we were seeing after just a few days on treatment. So I think um, it's a lot easier to keep patients on therapy. Yeah, I think that's the key is the, the, the key is finding the right dose for being on it long term because we have these long term uh, responders that do very, very well. So. All right, great. Any thoughts about case one? I mean, um, treated very aggressively with surgery, IV, IP chemotherapy, and then, you know, I think all of us would have given her some type of maintenance. Mm -hmm. I probably would have had her on bevacizumab because that's what I prefer and would have added a laparib on. If she would have had any problems, then I would have switched over to, uh, to, uh, to, to niraparib. I mean, what a, what a fantastic opportunity to even be having this conversation. I mean, think <laughs> about five years ago where we were. Yeah. And um, we felt like we were just spinning our wheels for so long in ovarian cancer. And then it, we just have all of these options now that are good options. I've never heard the word unprecedented come up in so many talks, but, but really, I mean, that, that's where we are at this point. And it, the, the, the future just continues with the trials that are on the horizon to, to further define better ways to treat these patients.